Well, when I go to Europe, that's a whole different sauce. But first of all, my, my agent over in Europe is a character in and of himself, the great Klaus Schmidt. Uh, Klaus is the great German beast. Now, if you met Klaus, he at one point had long blonde hair. And if you could write a, a, a definition of what you think a German guy named Klaus would look like, it's him. But over the years, it's just become kind of white. So he's got more kind of a Gandalf look. And uh, I'm going to say he's terse. But he's honest as the day is long. I'll take honest and terse over gre gregarious and disingenuous. You know what I'm saying? Boy, that was a vocabulary lesson right there that I didn't even understand. But you get the idea. I like Klaus because he's honest. If you don't say and do what you th you're supposed to do, he'll probably end up screaming at you in a way that is very manifestly unpleasant. I'll give you an example. Uh, we were in Holland one time. And... Um, we showed up and the hotel was supposed to have our rooms ready and and they did not have our rooms ready. Now, here's one of the things that's perplexing about when you're in Europe. You would think that a German and a Dutch person are going to be able to communicate in some kind of, oh, well, one is going to speak Dutch and one's going to speak German. No, their language of uniformity is English, which is just bizarre to me. And I'm going to tell you right now that Klaus's English is not is not great. So he goes in there and he's having this spirited conversation with this woman about the fact that our hotel rooms are not ready. And all of a sudden, something happens where, and this happens with Klaus every now and again. I'll see you this. But there's like a very split second blood curdling scream that happens. And I don't know what he's actually saying, but he's manifesting his displeasure with the service being provided. And this woman, of course, is taken aback and she looks shell shocked. And after a moment where they, they kind of calm things down and so on and so forth, I hear Klaus say, okay, we're going to move our stuff, our luggages, as he always says. Not our luggage, our lug. We're going to move our luggages into this closet over here. And so as we're getting in there, he's kind of trying to make peace with the Dutch woman. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. You're probably saying to yourself, here comes the great German beast again. And so from there on in, it was very clear to me that Klaus had a new nickname which was the great German beast. And a couple of days later, after we'd been continually calling him the great German beast, we were in a place in Germany and we were in this kind of strange perch where the dressing room was. And there was this spiral staircase coming down and, and some fans were going to be coming up to talk to us. And of course I didn't really care, but Klaus, you know, there are lines to be drawn. And this was one that Klaus felt was manifestly uh, untenable, where these people having the audacity to come up to our, our, our lair. So all of a sudden he springs into action. He's going downstairs. And I go, there he goes, the great German beast. And he looks at me and he grabs his hands like talons and he looks at me and he goes, gravel, gravel. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the W in German is more of a V. So he was trying to say growl, but the great German beast said it more like gravel, gravel, which to me was the greatest thing ever. And you've got yourself a lexicon, a class lexicon of verbiage, which of course we've built on over the years. And it's been nothing but spirited, good, clean fun. So Klaus, I'll be with again this, uh, this spring as we go out on the road. And Klaus is also known for not having um, the best GPS unit. He's got one that I believe is steam powered. And he also has, um, He's got a cell phone that is not quite, you know, that huge walkie-talkie iteration, but it's not too many generations past that. So his ability to function in the modern world is somewhat suspect. So we are always getting lost with Klaus, and this drives me absolutely insane. And I just go, Klaus, you know what? If you just get a smartphone, you'd have your GPS on it, your email, and your ability to communicate with the world via telephone all in one little device. Well, of course, he thinks this is devilry, much like he thinks air conditioning is devilry, okay? We'll be on the road. We'll be driving down the road. It's hotter than hell in this one of those Mercedes Sprinter. I don't want to use the word Mercedes like it's a term of opulence as I'm on the road. This is a utilitarian vehicle that has a cab in the front and our gear goes in the back. And as we're riding down the road, we'll get very, very warm, and especially the guys in the back. I ride shotgun, why? Because my name's on the poster, okay? And I do try to mix it up a little bit, but I got long ass limbs, I'm going in the front, okay? So the guys in the back are dying back there, it's hot. Klaus, can you please put on the air conditioning? It's poison. He says it's poison. So he'll begrudgingly put it on in a very, very you know, low setting. And then as you do when you're driving down the road, everyone kind of falls asleep. And all of a sudden you wake up and you're just dripping with sweat. Because as soon as you go out, Klaus, 
turns off the air conditioning because it's poison. As he then pulls over on the side of the road to have a cigarette. Cause cigarettes are poison. Air conditioning is not. Those are some of the people you meet on the road. Klaus Schmidt, the great German beast. Gravel.